Jamie, you can start. Zach Charbonnet, your expectations and the best case scenario. Best case scenario is uh, he wins a job or there is an injury, uh, which I would not like to see, but he just wins a job over Ken Walker. But if obviously Walker misses any time, Charbonnet lead running back for Seattle and proves to be better than Walker and does all the things that Pete Carroll wants to do. So expectations are it's a split and we probably see, you know, a frustrating backfield for a good portion of the season. until maybe one of those guys pulls ahead, but um, if, if Charbonnet does get the lead role and keeps Ken Walker on the bench, he could be a top 10 running back. Dave, do you see a scenario where drafting Zach Charbonnet a hundredth overall is just a bad pick that he's just useless and droppable? Of course, because he could go to camp and, you know, the one thing that we know about Charbonnet is he's not an explosive running back. He doesn't have that top gear like Kenneth Walker has. He's a physical guy. Um, he's, he's, he's got good balance, so he can break tackles and make some guys miss and, and pick up some extra rushing yards that way. I think he's going to contribute immediately on passing downs. I think he's going to be locked into that role. As long as he shows it in training camp, you'll see him potentially have as many as 40 catches this year. But you might also see him with only like 90 carries on top of it. I think if you go into it with the expectation of, all right, maybe he's 10 PPR points on a in a pretty good week. Maybe there's a matchup that we like where he can come in and, and he can pick up some numbers there. And you're hoping that he overtakes Kenneth Walker, like Jamie said, because of injury or because he's just better, maybe just more consistent. Then he's worth it. He's he's worth this is the range to get him in. I think in order to move him up into like that round seven range. We're going to have to hear some really good things about him out of Seattle. So this list is a lot of running backs who have opportunities. Uh, Charbonnet, uh, I'll skip Kamara. He doesn't really fit this description, but these guys are maybe backup running yes. backs or maybe number two running back. Uh, Samaj P. Ryan, Rashad Penny, A.J. Dillon, Devon A. Chain from Miami, Damian Harris in Buffalo. Uh, I, you know, I would... First of all, uh, would you project Damian Harris real quick to lead the team in carries? Yep. If you were to say everybody's healthy, yes. Khalil Herbert in Chicago. Who has the best chance out of Charbonnet, Pirine, Penny, A-Chain, and let's say Khalil Herbert? Who has the best chance to just win the starting job? Herbert. Herbert. He already has it. I don't know if he already has it. I think he's already got it. Uh, that, when I say starting job, I mean, literally, he's on the field, first play of the game for Chicago. That's not what I mean, though. Sorry. Okay. So be, be the lead it. back. Be the lead back. Oh, well, then in that Undis- case, Herbert. Undisputed. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll get, we'll get to all these guys. But he won't be a workhorse. He will share. All these guys are going to share. But he's right, the one that I think run out maybe, maybe has the most explosive talent, fits the offense. Um, there, there could be an issue with him as far as getting catches and touchdowns. But if you're looking for 15 carries a game, I think Herbert's going to give it to you. All right, Dave, Jamison Williams, 103rd overall. Your expectations and the best case scenario, and he will serve a suspension to start the season. Going to go out on a limb and say the first week, six weeks of the season, he's going to absolutely suck. (laughs) And then he's going to come back in week seven against Baltimore, and he's going to absolutely suck. And then week eight, Monday night game against Las Vegas. He cashes in and he goes into the bye week and you'll be so happy that you took him when you took him because he's got the rest of the season to look forward to a week to keep getting his legs right and a schedule. I, don't know, I haven't really looked at the schedule for the second half of the year for the Lions, but they play the Bears twice. They've got uh, they got Minnesota twice. One of them's in week 18 Dallas in week 17. That's going to stink for everybody. That's going to be a tough game for the Lions. But I, I think that you'll draft him with the hopes that he can be a wide receiver three or a flex starter for you once he comes back from that uh, from that suspension. And the best case scenario for Jamison Williams? Kind of the exact same thing, other except that he like makes a, a star-studded play every week, regardless of the opponent. You know, it's like almost like he has a like a, a Christian Watson like midseason debut. Okay. And you're just at the point where it's like, okay, this guy's got so much upside. I can't sit him because we know he's got potential every time he touches the ball to score, and he's going to touch the ball at least five times. Samaj P. Ryan, Jamie, 107th overall. Expectations and best case scenario. Best case scenario is Javante Williams doesn't play for a good portion of the season, or certainly at least the you know first six games. 
and Samaje looks like the lead guy and then holds on to that job for the majority of the year. And we see Javante, you know, maybe have a J.K. Dobbins like struggle, you know, even when he's back, he's not playing very well and maybe misses time again. Expectations would probably be that there's a split and he's playing on third downs and, you know, becomes a borderline flex option if Javante does look like Javante Williams again. Okay. So you're uh, you're drafting him not as someone you're starting as a flex, but so, well, you're drafting him with the with the fairly realistic possibility that Javante Williams misses time. And, I'm drafting him as a lottery ticket right now. I'm drafting him with the idea that Javante misses time or does not, you know, return to form, and he's the best running back in Denver. Which you know, this is the guy that they went out and targeted, and the guy that Sean Payton continues to talk up. But I also understand that. Samaj P. Ryan's been a backup for a reason. He's just been very good from a production standpoint whenever he's gotten those opportunities. So, you know, you have to understand that if you're drafting now, okay, maybe he's going to be a potential starting running back for you on your fantasy roster. But there's also the realistic possibility that you may not know when to use him if Javante is on the field for week one, then you just have to play it out for the first couple of weeks. Hey, do do either of you guys think that Samaj was signed because of what he did best? in Cincinnati, even when Mixon was healthy, and that's play third downs. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah, and so if that's the case, and and we know that Sean Payton loves to throw the ball to his running backs or at least dial up those plays, whether or not Russ actually does it remains to be seen. But I think there's 50 catches here. And and if he, if Javante is not ready to go, or if he gets hurt or gets off to a slow start, there, there's a ton of upside here. Um, very happy to take P. Ryan, for example, ahead of Zach Charbonnet in drafts. Oh, wow. yeah, I, I, I can't see 50 catches if Javante's healthy, but I think it's within the realm of possibility if he misses the majority of the season. That's an interesting take. You're taking P. Ryan over Charbonnet. Yes, Jamie? I would also right now. Yeah, but I, I think once we get to August, if Javante's off the pup list, I would take the upside of Charbonnet. Hmm. Jamie, we should really talk before the show. Once again, it seems like we have the same color on. <laughs> Does it make for a very visually? <laughs> yeah, the other day that we were a little different. You were red, I was orange. Yeah, yeah, it was he that I were red and Jamie was orange. Um, all right, how about the next three guys? Interesting players, Rashad Penny, A.J. Dillon, and Devon A-Chain, the rookie for the Miami Dolphins. Penny now with the Eagles. Dillon, of course, the Packers, and A-Chain for the Dolphins. They're all going 109th to 113th, so right there at the... 9-10 turn, basically. And how would you guys rank them? Jamie, you can go first. Penny, Dylan, A-Chain. Dylan, A-Chain, Penny right now. But that can certainly change. Dave? Taking Dylan. A-Chain's right behind him. And then I've got P. Ryan in my PPR rankings. And then Penny right behind him. And the, each of these guys, they've got some pretty good strengths and some crazy high upside. But it's almost like all three of them everything just has to go right. There's like a narrow pathway for them to absolutely nail uh, their upside and be a top 15 fantasy running back this season. If both Dylan, I guess I might as well do all three. If all three of these guys, Penny, Dylan, and A-Chain play a full season, who has the most carries? Dylan. Dylan. Who has the second most? Penny. Agreed. I just don't. I just can't get excited about drafting Devon A. Chain. I, I feel like he has two players. Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel I, like I, I maybe. I maybe have changed my opinion on this, but he's just so small. <laughs> he's so small. He's well. Look, he he's already put on I think four pounds of muscle since being drafted. They clearly want to get him a little bit more hulked up, uh, so that he can play. And he is he is blocked by two other running backs who know the system that they're running in Miami, but they're older guys and they don't have a chain. Well, I shouldn't say that most might have him beat on speed, but Jeff Wilson does not. Jeff Wilson is, has pretty much devolved into a, you know, solid running back for the scheme that the dolphins run. If a chain learns it quickly. And my guess is that he will, he's got a great one cut ability. He's just going to give them a whole new element to that offense. It's going to drive defenses bonkers. And he's got small hands and he's not a big dude, but he can catch and they can use him in the passing game and give them a, a whole new element that maybe they didn't necessarily want to rely on that much on a week to week basis with Wilson and certainly with Mostert. And you know, the deal with Mostert 31 years old, 
you know, you, you, you just, you know, you, you tap him on the knee like that and he's gone for four weeks. Jeff Wilson could also go down for several weeks. It leaves a great path for a chain. Um, but yeah, you are drafting him more so because of his talent and the, the system that he's in more than the opportunity that uh, we could project for him in week one. Okay, next group would be Damian Harris, Khalil Herbert, and Antonio Gibson. So we're still in round 10, maybe getting into round 11 here of a 12-team league. Damian Harris uh, now with the Bills, Khalil Herbert splitting with Deontay Foreman and maybe Rashawn Johnson for the Bears, and Antonio Gibson. We just heard that Ron Rivera says he wants to get Antonio Gibson more involved. So how do you guys rank these three, Harris, Khalil Herbert, and Antonio Gibson? Jamie. Um, Herbert for now. Then Gibson, then Harris in PPR. Herbert, Gibson, Harris. And how about you, Dave? Herbert, Harris, Gibson. And Herbert is the highest ranked running back we've talked about today. Um, no, that's not true. We talked about Alvin Kamara. I've got Kamara higher than Herbert. But I've got him higher than Javante right now. I've got him higher than everybody else that we've mentioned. Uh, I, I, I think that there's a lot of potential for him in Chicago. Uh, okay. What? Okay. Well, we're doing expectations and best case scenario. So why don't you do that for Khalil Herbert? I think the expectation is he's going to be the one a running back for Chicago. He doesn't deliver the same type of physicality that Foreman or Roshan Johnson can. I think he can compete as far as catches goes and, and maybe not necessarily get all of them. Like he, I don't even know if he necessarily plays on every third down for Chicago, because if it's third and short, they'll go with one of the bigger backs. If it's third and long, maybe it's Herbert because he can break plays because he's faster, but Roshan can catch the ball. It really might come down to how quickly Roshan adapts to Chicago's offense. And the better that Roshan does, obviously it's going to be terrible for Deontay Foreman, but it'll be bad for Herbert too. I'm thinking that there might be a bit of a learning curve for Roshan, partially because the Bears don't have to force it with him because they've got the other two backs and Herbert is just so much different than those other two backs. Uh, I'm, I am okay taking Herbert in round seven as if, if you have to, as a low end RB two, but preferably as a flex or a high end RB three, the best case scenario is that the bears cut Deontay Foreman, Roshan Johnson messes up a few times as a rookie and Khalil Herbert, who already had the two games last year with the most carries for the bears gets a lot more of those types of games. And then we're talking huge fantasy numbers. It would it would be fun to see Herbert do that. I'm I'm just getting more and more excited the things I'm hearing out of Chicago from Johnson. And he's becoming the one that I want to draft the most because he's going to go later than Herbert. And so I think that gives you just the 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 value of you know getting a piece of that backfield. Um, but it would not surprise me if Johnson's the best running back in Chicago. That's interesting because I, I think at a there's a point in the draft where if you're getting Khalil Herbert in the tenth round, does it really matter if you're getting Roshan Johnson in the twelfth? I, I, I don't think that we are going to see Herbert going to 10th round. I think Dave's draft round value for him is probably more realistic of what we'll see. But if there's going to be hype for Roshan Johnson, then there's a chance you might see both of those guys going round eight. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I don't think that's a problem to, you know, wait it out and see which one falls to a point where you're comfortable with. And, you know, it could be one of those situations where depending on how you draft, you get both of them. Um, but yeah. I, I, I do think that, there's going to be a little bit more buzz once we get to camp about Herbert yeah. um, until we start to hear a little bit more about what Roshan's doing. Uh, and then there's the one other small detail that we forgot to talk about in Chicago, which is Justin Fields potentially leading everybody in rushing because of what he's capable of doing with his legs. And that obviously will take away some chances for all the running backs there. Yep. Yeah, it's true. You almost wonder if for a guy to really be good for fantasy, if he has to really emerge and kind of dominate the carries. Not saying 100% of the running back carries, but 80%. I don't know. Well, if you want, if you want a comparison, it's like th this is not going to be, take it for what it's worth, however you view him, not as good as what Miles Sanders was last year. You know, yeah, running, that's a good running quarterback where one guy dominated the carries. You know, so this is going to be, you know, where they, they probably chop it up to whatever degree, two guys, three guys, you know, I, I don't think they're cutting Foreman, uh, but I don't know if he's going to be, you know, in, in the mix, if Roshan's doing what he's capable of doing and, and Herbert as well. 